Good evening, I'm Jacqueline Matter. I'm Scott Dennis, thanks for being with us tonight. Topping our news, what was once a quick drive through State Road 64 near I-75 now takes a lot longer thanks to a construction project. It's a project the Florida Department of Transportation says will redesign the ramp and add walkways and bike lanes. In the meantime, drivers who take these roads every day are not happy. ABC 7's Taylor Torregano is live there now. She joins us. Good evening, Taylor. Good evening, Jacqueline Scott. It's rush hour now and you can see all the traffic from where I'm standing in the heart of all of this construction. But the good news is the contractors tell me today they're ahead of schedule and working as fast as they can. With all this traffic, you might be filling up here often. And it's making a big impact on the daily routine for everybody to drive back and forth to work right now. A main artery through town now under construction, making it nearly impossible to get through this intersection in less than double the time it used to take. I would say sometimes a good half hour just to get over 70 because of the all the traffic. If you're in a rush, forget it. State Route 64 at I-75 is not the route for you. They are, they're nuts. I've had guys or people come by and like go on the shoulder and almost hit my car and yeah, I don't, I wouldn't drive it if I didn't have to. Unavoidable for some and enough to drive even the baby passengers over the edge. She goes crazy and wants to run like she wants to now. So uh, I prefer that that wasn't the case. Unfortunately, it's just getting started. The Florida Department of Transportation says it's reconfiguring this ramp, adding sidewalks and bike lanes here and widening the roads. A projected completion date of late next year, early 2020, which sounds like forever to some. This is too bumpy. You know, they're finally fixing it, which is great, but you know, it was rough on the tires. It's rough on everywhere else, whether I'm in my car or the motorcycle. Improvement, even if it is slow and steady. But in the meantime, we can all probably learn a thing or two from the one man who remained positive as he slowed for the cone zone. I love his position. This is very good, very nice. to keep up with this project and any others with the Florida Department of Transportation, I put a link on our website. Just visit mysuncoast.com. I'm live on SR64, Taylor Torregano, ABC7, your Suncoast News. All right, Taylor, thank you so much. Let's take a look at first alert traffic at this hour. We're seeing some backups tonight over the DeSoto Bridge in Manatee County uh, as you head north into Palmetto and also a little bit heading south as people head home for the weekend. Jacqueline. The Sarasota County School District is now admitting it missed a major red flag when hiring a teacher who is now behind bars for possessing child pornography. Quentin Peterson taught at Booker High School, but when he was hired, he was on administrative leave at Manatee County Schools after allegations of inappropriate contact with students. Sarasota County Schools did three background checks before hiring Peterson. The red flag that they missed was with the Florida Department of Education. An alert regarding Peterson was posted on October 3rd and the district says they simply missed it. Allegations against Peterson date back to 2015. He was accused of having inappropriate contact with students three times since then. Palmetto police ruling two claims as unsupported. The third claim is what put him behind bars. And that's my concern here is I believe uh, that his uh, former middle school knew some things about this individual that wasn't conveyed to us in a completely forthcoming way. Uh, I certainly think that they have failed in their obligation to the profession as a whole. Right now, we are uncovering more details about this case. We'll have more on this story coming up tonight at 6. Nearly one year after a Northport man exposed himself while driving next to a school bus full of fourth graders, he begins his time behind bars. ABC 7's Erica Jackson joins us now to share what happened in the courtroom today and why this isn't the first time the 58-year-old was sentenced for a crime in this county. Erica. Scott, thank you. Stephen Pfeiffer will spend two and a half years behind bars, and once he is released, he will be on sex offender probation for seven years. Today, Pfeiffer was sentenced after entering a plea deal. There were many tears in that courtroom coming from Pfeiffer and members of his family. A Sarasota County judge formally found him guilty of lewd and lascivious behavior involving a victim under 16. Three witnesses took the stand this afternoon, a bus driver and two teachers. They gave their account of what happened on May 
May 8, 2017, stating they saw Pfeiffer speed up and slow down to drive next to a school bus on I-75, driving with his passenger window down, masturbating next to a bus full of fourth grade students. He got over in the left lane um, on my left side and slowly traveled back until he was like pretty much in line with my section of my students and he was full out um, masturbating, full view, um, passenger window down. The pain that I brought to my family, the shame that I brought to my family uh, is really the worst part except for the, you know, the pain and the suffering of my victim, Floyd. Sir, I'm sorry. This wasn't the first time Pfeiffer was in the Sarasota County Courthouse recently. He was charged with video voyeurism in 2016. He entered a plea deal of one year probation in October of that year. He requested early termination of his probation, which ended on May 3rd, 2017. And then the school bus incident took place just five days later on May 8th. Jacqueline. Okay, thank you, Erica. Well, the weekend is finally almost here. Let's check in with Chief Meteorologist Bob Harrigan. Well, good afternoon, everyone. A beautiful day it has been, too, here along the Sun Coast. We have a cold front and not much of one. There it is stretching down from the Atlantic all the way through central Florida now. There's a weak clouds there, not much going on, really. High pressure is going to dominate our weather over the upcoming days. That's going to be the big story, too. Uh, warm temperatures as a result of this high pressure ridge, and it's not going to budge much over the upcoming days. We'll talk more about that in just a few minutes. 79 degrees right now, lots of sunshine, beautiful afternoon here. Some showers well down to our south. The uh, humidity 66%. That's comfortable. Winds out of the west northwest a bit breezy, 14 miles an hour. And that's one thing we'll note is that we will see kind of a breezy uh, day tomorrow at times. Uh, it's 82 in Jacksonville. It's 86 now in Orlando. A bit cooler where the rain is falling near Miami and in the Keys now. 77 degrees there. And your evening planner couldn't ask for better weather. Mostly fair skies uh, through the 11 o'clock hour. Temperature 69 degrees by 11. And looks as though we'll see uh, some mild temperatures over the weekend and things start to really heat up on Monday. Details on that coming up in a few minutes. Back to you. All right, Bob, thank you. It's being called a first of its kind idea for Sarasota County. The Venice Police Department will soon open a substation at Venice High School. ABC 7's Christopher Brantley shows us how the increased officer presence will affect students on campus. For the Parkland school shooting, but since then, it's taken on an added emphasis. It makes me feel a lot safe, but knowing that we're going to include this new department will make me feel a lot safer. Senior Carter Hoey says the more officers on campus, the better. But knowing we have more people looking out for us, I feel like every student will feel safer going from class to class and through our daily routines. The school already has two full-time Venice Police school resource officers, but Principal Eric Jackson saw an opportunity for more. To me, it just made sense that we would partner with them and have a, a a continual presence on our campus at all times. That means this office will be staffed 24 hours a day, seven days a week. It's mutually beneficial. The school gets more officers and the officers get an office. We currently have some uh, issues with room at the current facility we have. So what this does is this provides a 24 seven access for our officers assigned to the island. During a time the school district is working to find money for officers and other schools, Superintendent Todd Bowden says this could be the model of the future. What it tells me is if you get a lot of smart people thinking creatively, creatively uh, you get come up with really positive solutions. And in this case, a solution that doesn't cost anything to the school district or the police department. I think it benefits both parties very well, so it's a win-win. Some of the details are still being worked out. The goal is to have the office fully up and running by the start of the next school year. In Venice, Christopher Brantley, ABC 7, your Suncoast News. All right, thank you, Christopher. With more paraprofessionals leaving a Sarasota County school, today teachers and staff are working to raise money to bring on board more help for its students with special needs. Parents at Oak Park School say their biggest concern is the difference in pay per hour for these people who do so much for their children. With a total of 26 open positions currently, the school has seen an increase in staff who are moving to other schools that can pay as much as $3 more per hour. It's not a living wage. Our paraprofessionals are underpaid compared to other paraprofessionals in the district. And the county will tell you that contract negotiations are not up this year. However, we feel that the change needs to happen sooner rather than later. 
parents say it's important to stop the revolving door because it is not only better for their child's education, but it also gives them peace of mind. Still to come in your Suncoast News tonight, the buzz continues over the firing of Venice's head football coach this week. Why one of his former players believes the firing was more than just liking a tweet. And Chief Meteorologist Bob Harrigan will be back with how the weather's looking for this upcoming weekend. Plus, can energy drinks make your heart beat abnormally? A new study that's raising concerns straight ahead. Monday at 4 on Suncoast View. You can make some extra money just by cleaning out your kids' closets. I'm Stephanie Roberts on Suncoast View. We'll tell you about a huge Suncoast consignment event designed for moms to help each other and be socially conscious. This year's nonprofit giving challenge is coming up. We'll tell you how you can get involved. Plus, Manatee Players previews a brand new musical, and Brew Burgers from Venice joins us in the kitchen. Monday at 4 on Suncoast View. Get more for your money at Sunset Subaru in Sarasota. Subaru vehicles hold their value better than any other brand for 2018, according to ALG. And Subaru is Kelly Blue Book's most trusted brand for four years running. The Subaru Impreza is an IIHS top safety pick for 11 years running. Lease a new Subaru Impreza today for just $155 a month or get 0% financing with zero down. Get more for your money. Go to Sunset Subaru in Sarasota. Today, everyone is looking for more fashionable choices in flooring than ever before. And G. Freed has responded with a huge selection of carpets, tile, wood, laminate, and vinyl. Installed by a highly skilled team, G. Freed has got everything you're looking for and more. The next time you think about quality flooring, think G. Freed Flooring America. G. Freed Flooring America. Our world is at your feet. If you're only hungry for a slice of apple pie, why buy the whole pie? And you certainly wouldn't want to pay for an all-you-can-eat buffet. So if you don't use your cell phone that much, why get charged for a plan that's too big or even an unlimited plan? Luckily, there's still a wireless company that shares your values. Welcome to Consumer Cellular. Our average customer pays about $25 a month for everything they need. Many pay even less as plans start at just $15 a month. You'll get a straightforward bill that's easy to understand with no surprises and all the attention you deserve from our friendly customer service team. No wonder Consumer Cellular has received the J.D. Power Award for highest customer service four times in a row. Plus, if you're an AARP member, you'll receive special discounts. It's easy to switch. You can even keep your phone and your number. So stop paying for more than you need and start your 30-day risk-free trial today. Call 800-457-2317, go online, or visit a Target store today. My name is Stephen Jaffe. Uh, the law firm's name is Farmer Jaffe. One of the beautiful things about Julius is he's always smiling and it becomes infectious. The fact that Julius has a disability has absolutely nothing to do with the quality of work that he's done. Just a, a great person you want on your staff. Hi, this is Dan Marino. When your business recruits people with disabilities, everybody wins. To find out how, go to abilitieswork.employflorida.com. Venice High School football coach John Peacock was fired this week, just months after the Indians won a state football championship. Peacock was dismissed after he liked a tweet from one of his players, that tweet making fun of the Braden River football coach, and some viewed it as racist. One of Peacock's former players now plays in the NFL and helped lead the Philadelphia Eagles to their first Super Bowl championship when they defeated the Patriots a few months ago. Trey Burton spoke with ABC 7's Alan Cohn today about Peacock's firing. He believes the firing was about more than just liking a tweet. I don't think just because of this tweet um, or him liking the tweet or whatever it was that um, they fired him and I think that uh, there's a couple you know people higher up who um, kind of wanted to see him out, and with the easiest way they could possibly do it is, is by this. Good night on ABC 7 at 7. You can see the entire interview with that former Venice Indian and now Super Bowl champion, Trey Burton. Sarasota police out patrolling today for another edition of Tweet from the Beat, but this time from the water. The department's Marine Patrol out making sure that boaters are following the rules and staying safe. SPD posted this video earlier today when they spotted a mama dolphin with her calf in the Sarasota Bay. Cute. 
And an early start to the sea turtle nesting season here on the Sun Coast. A Moat Marine Lab Sea Turtle Patrol discovering two nests, one on the Sarasota County side of Lombok Key, the other on the Manatee County half of the key. The group includes a team of scientists, interns, and 300 volunteers who monitor nesting activity on our area beaches every day of sea turtle nesting season, which officially runs from May 1st to October 31st. But obviously, the turtles don't wait for the calendar. Yeah. They wait for the time to be right. <laughs> right. And, uh, the first of thousands of nests we hope to come. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, make sure everyone turns their lights off uh, yeah. near the beaches. That's the Very important true. point. Or get those turtle lights, you know, that don't allow the light to go out toward the water. Uh, we're looking at some great water temperatures uh, starting to warm up and also great beach weather, too. Perfect out there. Casey Key webcam showing uh, some calm conditions and the front itself, not much to it at all. Uh, it is acting up down south right now, bringing some showers and storms near Fort Myers all the way over to Miami. Some pretty big weather there. A beautiful weekend ahead as high pressure moves in, and this high pressure is going to sprawl across the entire eastern and southeastern United States, it looks like. So that's going to be the story. Bit breezy tomorrow. We'll have winds occasionally up to 15 miles an hour uh, for boaters. It will be a little breezy in the morning, then breezy again in the late afternoon. Uh, in between, it'll be okay. Warm up for the next week, and we're talking temperatures. Possibly approaching 90 degrees by Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday of next week. So it will start to feel a little bit like summer, a little taste of it. Here's the uh, front. There's not really much to it. You can see this was at noon today. Some moisture coming in out ahead of the front. The front, a very weak at that point. And then uh, you can see a thin line of clouds there. It continues to push off to the southeast. And lots of rain from uh, Fort Pierce south, southward through Miami, down through the Florida Straits, and into Fort Myers right now. Although the showers here are weakening, uh, really picking up in intensity near West. West Palm Beach, Fort Lauderdale, uh, stretching up just north of that near Fort Pierce. And uh, for us, high and dry, it's not going to rain. We're not going to see much rain at all. In fact, even in the long range forecast, not much going on. Sydney Desmond getting this shot that you see in the background there. 79 degrees, lots of sunshine, west to northwest winds at 14. The pressure 2985. It has fallen a little bit as that low pressure off to the east continues to move away. We'll see that high pressure build in. Uh, here's the European forecast model showing some showers continuing to linger up until about 5 a.m. near the Keys. So kind of a wet uh, start to the day there. But for us, uh, not much going on at all. In fact, it stays that way on Saturday. Sunday and into uh, most of all of next week as uh, this high pressure system is really going to uh, hold firm, I think, over the, much of the southeast United States until looks like late Friday another front moves through. That's next week, so seven days uh, we're going to see sunshine and very warm temperatures, it looks like, uh, beginning Monday. Well, there's that storm system, the low pressure area now working its way off to the northeast and the attendant cold front uh, stretching down into north central Florida. Notice the clear skies here from Missouri, Arkansas into Kansas. That's that high pressure ridge which will continue to build off toward the southeast. The showers still causing some problems. It's been kind of a cloudy wet day and uh, looks like that was all week long for the most part over the northeast. Well, here comes the front and the front will continue to move to the southeast. That front will eventually fade away and, and become stationary and then eventually dissipate. High pressure will build in over the southeast. We'll get that return of that easterly wind, which will really warm things up. As I mentioned, temperatures will be running around five to eight degrees above average over the upcoming week. And the long range model really shows that warm days uh, start to show up all across the southeast uh, beginning early next week. Well, for boaters tomorrow, we'll start off with northwest winds at 15 knots and then they'll subside somewhat becoming more northerly at five to 10 knots and pick back up later in the afternoon. The water temperature now is 78 degrees. It's pretty mild right now. And as far as the seven day forecast goes, great weather for the DeSoto uh, parade. The uh, parade will be taking place in Manatee Avenue there, 79 degrees. And then we'll see temperatures uh, really get into the upper 80s as we move through Monday through Friday of next week. Back to you. Okay, thank you, Bob. In health news tonight, Romaine Lettuce from Arizona has been linked to an E. coli outbreak that's hospitalized at least 84 people across 19 states. Kim Hutcherson has details on what you can do to avoid getting sick. E. coli bacteria is all around us, even inside us. But certain strains produce a toxin that can cause diarrhea, urinary tract infections, respiratory illness, and even infections in your bloodstream. Most people can prevent E. coli illness by properly handling food and practicing good hygiene. Wash your hands before and after preparing a meal, and especially before you eat. Rinse off raw fruits and vegetables before eating them. Prevent cross-contamination by keeping raw meat and seafood away from ready-to-eat foods. It's crucial to thoroughly cook beef and pork. That's why it's recommended to use a food thermometer. 
But E. coli isn't only found in the kitchen. Wash your hands after using the bathroom or coming in contact with animals. Be careful to not swallow water while swimming. Symptoms of E. coli illness typically appear three to four days after coming in contact with the bacteria. Contact your doctor if you experience severe diarrhea, bloody stools, vomiting, or cramps. For today's Health Minute, I'm Kim Hutcherson. Well, do you buy energy drinks for your children or maybe drink them when you're working out? A recent study found that healthy adults were more likely to have an abnormal heartbeat and high blood pressure after drinking an energy drink. Another study found that children younger than six years old account for more than 40 percent of the emergency calls to poison centers that relate to energy drinks. They have also been linked to cardiac arrhythmia in children. Doctors say to be cautious with energy drinks because further studies are needed to understand just how safe they really are. Coming up, deputies save the day for a mama duck and her newly hatched ducklings. And caught on camera, a Texas mailman busts a move. <laughs> My name is Stefan Campagna. We're Ben Gates and Dramus. And here is your law tip of the week. If you've been injured or arrested, I know this feels like the end of the road, but really it's the beginning of a long, potentially stressful process. So give us a call, let us give you some peace of mind. The spring favorite sales event is going on now at Peterson Toyota of Sarasota. Drive a new 2018 Corolla for only $79 per month. The all new 2018 Camry for only $119 per month. And 2018 RAV4 for just $129 per month at Peterson Toyota of Sarasota. Set your course for a waterfront lifestyle on Florida's last private island. Discover One Particular Harbor by Margaritaville. Nearby sugar sand beaches are as easy to find as the warm Florida sunshine. Waterfront residences from the high 400s overlook beautiful Anna Maria Sound. And a new marina with direct access to the Gulf of Mexico. Plus, incredible savings on move-in ready homes. Come tour designer models today. Visit ophmintousa.com now. Here we go. We're gonna go out there in the rain. Gonna get wet. All right, here we go. Oh, no, 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 I am the resident district manager on the FAU campus for Chartwell. Whenever I see Haley, I do not see a person with a disability. I see a person with extraordinary abilities. Haley is always smiling. She's always on time. She gives fantastic customer service and is always focused on any job that she's given. Hi, this is Dan Marino. When your business recruits people with disabilities, everybody wins. To find out how, go to abilitieswork.employflorida.com. Soldiers in the Army National Guard live up to a set of time-honored principles. I will always finish first. They stand ready to respond to any crisis. I will never accept defeat. They serve in their communities as citizens and as soldiers. I will never quit. They train part-time to be ready to serve at all times. I will never leave a fallen comrade. Learn more at NationalGuard.com. Check out My Suncoast Dining on MySuncoast.com, your guide to the foodie lifestyle. ABC7's own Chef Judy serves up her favorite recipes, cooking tips and trends, dining blog, step-by-step -step videos, and Suncoast Restaurant Guide. You'll find it all at MySuncoast.com slash dining. An animal video posted by the Sarasota County Sheriff's Office is going viral, and no, it is not an alligator in a pool again this time. Well, take a look. These little guys are a lot fluffier than alligators, and they are still getting a lot of attention. Animal service officers captured the moment when they helped a mama duck and her babies get to the water after the ducklings hatched inside of a planter at Walmart. It was quite the journey for them, but as you can see, this story has a happy ending. Well, from a dancing mailman to a barista's amazing work of art atop creamy, frothy beverages. Jeremy Roth has today's Take a Look at This. A Korean barista has gone viral for creating incredible works of art on top of lattes. 
Kangbin Lee hand paints colorful scenes on layers of delicious cream. He calls it cream art. His masterpieces atop the beverages are as eye-opening as the caffeine inside. His portfolio includes frothy works ranging from recreations of iconic masterworks to beloved TV and movie characters. Lee has been gaining notoriety for years and has even started teaching cream art classes. The only problem is the finished products may be too beautiful to drink. Video shot at the top of Hawaii's Mount Kilauea shows fiery new volcanic activity. On April 22nd, lava bubbled to the top of the summit's lava lake and over the crater's rim. The activity represented the biggest overflow from the volcano's main vent in 10 years. A time-lapse sequence shot between March 20th and April 18th shows the lava lake slowly rising. Scientists say the increased activity could mean a new vent inside the volcano could open soon, but currently there is no threat to the island. A dancing mailman in Texas proves the Miami sound machine was right. Eventually, the rhythm is going to get you. The prancing postman in Port Neches was caught on a doorbell camera boogieing when a homeowner took just a little too long to answer the door. The homeowner said once she saw the video, it made her day. For Take a Look at This, I'm Jeremy Raw. It's pretty funny. <laughs> you know why he's dancing? Why? It's Friday. Very true. Yeah, there you yeah. go. I like that one. Still to come in your Suncoast News, why a new home proposed to be built on Siesta Key is causing concerns for some locals. Plus, how DNA and a genealogy website helped investigators find one of the most prolific serial criminals in American history. Get a Sunset Dodge Chrysler Jeep Ram Fiat in Sarasota for big savings on new Ram trucks during the Spring Sales Event. Shop the area's largest selection of new Ram trucks. Get the all-new redesigned 2018 Ram Quad Cab for as little as $23,999. Or save big and get up to $12,400 off a new Ram Bighorn Crew Cab. Better prices, bigger selection. Go to Sunset Dodge Chrysler Jeep Ram Fiat in Sarasota today. I took my first handful of pills, and that's when all my priorities seemed to change. He would ask to use the bathroom in other people's homes. He just assumed that they would have medication. He'd go in their medicine cabinets and steal prescription drugs. I wish I knew really what these prescription pills were. We were so naive about the whole drug thing. These are all synthetic forms of heroin. Keep your medication locked up because you'll never notice that a pill is gone. Mind your meds. Learn more from the Partnership for Drug-Free Kids. We've all heard how military veterans adjusting to the civilian world may have certain issues. 30. 70. If only everyone had this issue. No matter what challenge they face, Easter Seals is here for America's veterans. Meet Blue. Blue's not feeling well. The prescription? Generic medication. Blue wonders, do they really work as well as name brands? Yes, generics and name brand medications do work the same. Even though they may look different, generics have the same key ingredients. FDA approval is equally rigorous for generics to make sure they're as safe and effective as name brands. And Blue even saves some green, making him a little less, well, blue. Talk to your doctor about generics and visit FDA.gov slash generic drugs. My name is Luke Perry, and I am one million strong. I'm in the fight against colorectal cancer because I believe we can win it. Colon and rectal cancers are the second leading cause of cancer deaths among men and women in the U.S. Colon cancer is preventable. Know the risk factors and make sure to get screened. There are simple take-home options available. Take control of your health. Screening for colon cancer isn't embarrassing. It can be life-saving. To find out more about your options, visit fightcrc.org. There's a lot of fear in coming back to school. I'm a 40-year-old man that walked in there to get his high school diploma. It was very hard for me, but one of the teachers was uh, Miss Araceli. She gave me direction. Every single time I had a question, she'll put down whatever she's doing and she'll sit there with you until you get it. 50% of getting your high school diploma is walking through those doors. The other 50% is doing the work. Find free adult education classes near you at finishyourdiploma.org.